In the serene words of the ancient philosopher Lao Tzu, the greatest weapon against stress is our ability to choose one thought over another. Welcome to the art of staying calm in any situation, where we delve into five practical techniques that offer the power to choose calmness in the cacophony of our daily lives. These methods aren't just theoretical musings, but are backed by both psychological insight and the timeless wisdom of sages. As we journey through these techniques, we will learn not just to endure the storm, but to stand amidst the whirlwind of challenges with a tranquil heart and a clear mind. Whether you're navigating the high seas of corporate boardrooms or the choppy waters of daily errands, these strategies are designed to be your anchor. Technique number one, grounding techniques. In moments of stress or disarray, our minds often become untethered, floating away into a sea of worries about the future and regrets from the past. This is where grounding techniques, rooted in the principles of mindfulness, can be a lifeline by consciously engaging each of our five senses to interact with our immediate environment. We effectively pull our consciousness back to the present. The practice starts with a visual inventory, identifying five distinct items within sight. The curve of a mug, the dance of shadows on a wall, the subtle color variation in a fabric. Each observation is a beacon of now moving to touch. Four different textures are acknowledged allowing tactile sensations to anchor us further. The grain of wood, the smoothness of metal, the warmth of sunlight, or the comfort of a worn chair. As we transition to auditory inputs, we note three sounds, tuning into frequencies and rhythms that often go unnoticed. The distant hum of traffic, the ticking of a clock, or the melody of birdsong. This auditory awareness acts as a reminder, much like Thich Nhat Hanh's teaching. The present moment is filled with joy and happiness. If you are attentive, you will see it. Then we engage with two scents, drawing in the world through our olfaction. Perhaps the sharpness of citrus or the subtlety of a perfume, each scent a narrative of the present. Finally, we conclude with taste, one flavor savored on the tongue, be it the lingering richness of chocolate or the freshness of mint, which brings the journey through our senses full circle. Each step is a deliberate affirmation of the now, a powerful declaration that we are here, in this moment fully and unequivocally. It is a technique that not only brings calm, but also celebrates the exquisite detail of our daily existence, often overlooked amidst our bustling lives. Technique number two, the 10 rule. When faced with challenges that unsettle our peace, the 10 rule beckons us to engage in a mental voyage through time. It is a strategic pause, inviting us to ask how consequential the present issue will be in 10 minutes, 10 months, and 10 years. This reflective technique is an exercise in perspective, akin to looking through the lens of a camera and adjusting the focus to capture a clearer picture of what truly matters. In the immediate aftermath of an upsetting event, our emotions can cloud our judgment, magnifying the significance of an issue but as we project ourselves into the future, 10 minutes ahead, the intensity often fades, the heat of anger cools, and the shadows of disappointment lighten. Fast forward 10 months, and the issue may have lost its contours, blending into the background of life's canvas. Imagine now, a decade later, many of the trials that once seemed insurmountable have likely become indistinct memories, if not completely forgotten. Marcus Aurelius, a sage in the art of perspective, once offered a stoic reflection. Very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself, in your way of thinking. The Ten Rule embodies this philosophy by guiding our thought process away from amplification of the trivial and toward a recognition of the enduring. It teaches us that time is a transformative force. Not only does it heal, but it also diminishes the weight of our immediate woes, offering us the clarity to see our situations as mere blips on the continuum of life. With this understanding, we can recalibrate our response, choosing serenity over chaos and composure over upheaval. The three, progressive muscle relaxation. Progressive muscle relaxation and parmini is a meticulous and therapeutic exercise essential for those seeking solace in times of stress. This technique involves a two-part process, tensing and then relaxing each muscle group in the body to begin, one must find a quiet space 
free from distractions, allowing for a complete focus on the task at hand, starting at the toes. You tense the muscles for about five seconds. This is followed by a rapid release, giving way to a wave of relaxation. The action is performed sequentially through each muscle group, up the legs, into the torso, through the arms, and finally culminating at the face and head. The act of tensing before relaxing is crucial as it makes one acutely aware of the contrast between the sensations of strain and serenity. The method is not only about achieving relaxation, but also about cultivating a deeper awareness of bodily stress. Aristotle's wisdom, knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom, rings particularly true here. Through PMR, individuals can learn to discern even the most subtle tensions within their bodies, often a physical manifestation of mental stress. The benefits of this technique are manifold. Physiologically, it can lower blood pressure, reduce fatigue, and improve sleep. Psychologically, it fosters a greater sense of control over one's physical state, which in turn can lead to improved concentration and a reduction in anxiety. By engaging in PMR, one actively partakes in a form of self-care that is both rejuvenating and enlightening, potentially transforming one's approach to stress and discomfort. Technique number four, the STOP method. The STOP method is a simple yet profound strategy for managing stress and regaining composure in challenging situations. It can be applied in any setting, whether at work, in personal relationships, or during moments of solitary contemplation. The first step is to stop, cease all activity, creating a deliberate break from the momentum of your reactions. This moment of pause is crucial, offering a space to breathe, and to disconnect from the autopilot of habitual responses. Next, take a breath. This isn't just any breath. It's a slow, deep inhalation that reaches the depths of your lungs, followed by a long, gentle exhalation. This breathing acts as a bridge connecting mind and body, and it brings you into the present moment, which is often lost in the fog of preoccupation. Then observe your thoughts and feelings. This is where you become an impartial witness to your own experience. What thoughts are passing through your mind? What emotions are stirring in your heart? This step is not about changing what you observe. It's about acknowledging your reality with kindness and without judgment. Lastly, proceed. After taking this moment to stop and reflect, you can now move forward with greater mindfulness and clarity. Consider the options available to you and choose a response that aligns with your values and desired outcomes. This may mean engaging in a difficult conversation with a level head, choosing to walk away from a conflict, or simply deciding to take more time before reacting. The STOP method is not just about stress reduction. It's about cultivating a mindful approach to life. It echoes the philosophy of Viktor E. Frankl, who believed between stimulus and response there is space, and in that space lies our power to choose our response. By using the STOP method, we claim that space, and in doing so, we claim control over our inner world. Techniques number five. The so what method. The so what method is an exercise in deconstructing stress by challenging the significance we assign to our concerns. It begins by confronting the stress ahead on with a simple question. So what? This inquiry acts as a catalyst for a series of follow-up questions that dissect the issue. So what if this happens? What is the worst that can happen? Can I handle that outcome? By peeling back the layers of anxiety and exposing the core of the issue, we often find that the root fear is either manageable or irrational. It's an approach that echoes the Stoic philosophy of Epictetus, who believe that it's not events that disturb people, but their judgments concerning them. By minimizing the perceived impact of a problem, this method helps to dismantle the edifice of stress we've constructed in our minds. The power lies in realizing that many of our worries are not as catastrophic as we initially believe. The so what? Method doesn't dismiss our feelings, but rather puts them into a broader context, reducing the emotional weight we carry and leading to a more resilient and calm disposition. In embracing these techniques, we cultivate a mental garden where calmness can bloom amidst the weeds of worry. By grounding ourselves, reframing our perspective, relaxing our body, and challenging our stress, we navigate life's storms with a steady hand and a serene heart.